the shoulder of giants, we decided that we would hire a French chateau called Chateau Le Col Noir. Still not too sure what that means. Noir's black, isn't it? I always think back and think, well, we were in a massive chateau in the south of France. We're driving Aston Martins, we're doing this, that, and the other, and it's like, wow, you know, there shouldn't be any tension. That should have been the most fun bands ever had. In the middle of all this, Liam was trying to kick the booze and I was trying to kick the drugs. And all the lyrics on that album reflect that time, really. I go there, I've gone, right, we're going to have another crack at it. Me and I kid are going to try and get on. I'm going to knock the booze on there. Went there two months, didn't drink an ounce. Bone had started getting wicked, which is fine, because that's what he did. But everyone sort of thought, oh, well, he can handle it. I felt as if I was getting bullied. But I'd done it anyway, just for the sake of the band and my voice. There was a problem with Liam, he was drinking too much. It's like, all right, so none of us will drink. It's been said that I drank too much while we were there. Of course I didn't. You know, he was, like, opening bottles of wine each night. So I could see it very soberish, and I was thinking, you're actually a bit of a knob. I'm a grown man. I'm going to stop doing what I do. I'll OK it with the singer. Is it all right, Liam? We'll, we'll go up to his bar open hills. He drinks a Coke. Do you mind if I have a pint of lager, Liam? I am driving, so I'm not going to get legless. Bono was just being a bit of an arsehole towards one of the people that was working with us. I thought he was being a bit out of order, to be honest. I decided in... Uh, a drunken state one night to have it out with him. He took offence, said he was going back to England. I said, I'll call you a taxi. Never seen him since. That was it. No one told me to leave, you know. I mean, Liam rang me up, come on, we could sort it out. I actually left that session. I didn't leave the band on that day. But I got home and I spent a couple of months serious thinking. I mean, it's not a small thing to do, leave that band. And in my case, it was like, well, I want to write songs. I want to write music. I want to write lyrics. I want to record my stuff. For me, first and foremost, that's what I want to do. That's what makes, I suppose, somebody leave a band like Oasis, just wanting to further themselves. He left, then Griggs leaves, and that's it, so it's pretty much up shit's creek. I remember that being a really, really, really good time. And then Bonin and Griggs left, right out of the blue. Again, we're just back in the midst of chaos, you know. Um, it was quite a weird ending, to which was turning out to be quite a good year for us. Now they knew what was coming. You make the album, you put out the single, you do the video, you rehearse, you do the tour, you have a couple of months off, then you make another album. So what do you do? You join a band to escape the nine to five and you get so big suddenly you're in a nine to five. That's what I think was the root cause of uh, Bonehead leaving the, the band that, that night. I can't really speak for Griggs, but I think he was doing it for reasons similar to mine. Family, again, what to do, what he wanted to do. My feeling was just like, oh, God, no, don't say that, Griggs, please. I haven't spoken to either of them since the day they left. I sometimes sit down and think, well, they've spoken to everybody else. I mean, what did I do to them, you know? Especially in the case of Griggs. I don't know why he left. I haven't got a clue. I don't know whether he's told anybody else, but nobody's telling me. I'm never, ever, ever, as long as I live, going to slag anyone or call anyone or be backhanded towards anyone in that band. I won't be where I am because of them. And because I know it's just not in my nature to say anything untoward towards any of them. I can't, won't say it. And there are no feelings like that. 